We wanted to make food accessible so it wasn't too expensive. We wanted to make sure it was delicious, so that people could say, wow, you can eat a Reuben or chili tots and it has no animals in it. It's made 100% from plants and it's still delicious. And so that was kind of our idea, is to make a mission-driven business to show the world that you can eat food that's delicious and keep animals off the plate. So Mike had been a chef uh, at all sorts of different restaurants. He's a formerly trained chef. He worked at Michelin Star Restaurant and had worked at high-end restaurants, but we knew we wanted to do our own restaurant. We were talking about starting a business together and he really, we wanted it to be something more accessible. And around the same time, we were changing our own diets um, and we were transitioning, you know, all the kind of lessons that we learned and we realized that it, making it to scale on a restaurant size was really important to us. It's one thing to change your diet at home, but on a restaurant, I mean, we serve, you know, thousands of meals, and so you can really make a difference. And, we, you know, something I, we had done in our personal lives, yeah. and part of you worries as a restaurant, will people yeah. still come in, and, will, you know, you always, but 100% people still come in, and we feel better about what we're doing. Um, yeah. We are our business lives the same ethics that we live at home. We've gotten so much support from the community and people, some people who come in and they said, wow, you know, my doctor said I had to change my diet. I never thought I'd be able to enjoy a quesadilla again or a burger again. And they, and they love it and it changes their lives. I mean, we've had some customers who have become real regulars. Um, they wanted to change their diet for whatever reason and they've been very for happy sure. and inspired to cook more at home and we recommend other vegan restaurants. And for sure. It's a difficult decision to come to, you know, personally or business-wise because we had watched like Forks Over Knives and, and things like that had been on my queue for, for years and years, but I was afraid to watch them because I was afraid that it was going to change my lifestyle and I wasn't willing to do that yet. And eventually we did get there. We use the word vegan, but I think it's really a lot more than that. Um, it's kind of the doing the least harm possible. So what can we do in the world to do the least harm possible to the world, the environment, to animals, to ourselves? And that does put a little bit of a damper on things that we can offer because of that. But having real compostable packaging, composting some of the food part of it, um, we only carry glass or aluminum bottles in the cooler. Plastic is such a problem because by the time you talk about silverware, to-go packaging, bottles, everything else. So in the restaurant, we use real dishes, real silverware, real napkins. You know, everything else is paper-based or wood-based, and we have to make choices. And um, I had to turn down a vendor the other day that offers wonderful juices, but they only offer them in plastic, and that was hard. Yeah. We wanted to have all of our teas that we now bottle, but originally, you know, the plastic cups, even if they do say compostable, like Sheila said, really, that's not a solution either. Yeah. You know? If you get a plastic to-go packaging from, let's say those clamshells, those are going to take a couple thousand years to biodegrade. It doesn't matter if the plastic says compostable because it has to be composted in a facility that does not exist in Florida. So that's not going to happen. So it's going to end up in a landfill or in our oceans, which we know is a huge problem, right? There's as many plastic pieces in the ocean as there is fish. We just didn't want to be a part of that. Whereas the with the ones that we get, you actually can put them in your backyard and they'll compost within 90 days. So we feel better about offering that type of packaging. And it's actually worked out really well. Yes. When you think of packaging costing 10 times as much on every dish, and we really try not to raise our prices yeah. because, we, again, we want our prices to be reasonable so a lot of people can afford to eat this. Right, and not, just, not only are the costs volatile, the availability of these yeah. products varies. You know, there was a time where I could not get paper bags, you know, among with, or, or glass bottles for that matter. So we weren't offering our house brew tea because we just couldn't get the bottles. For the actual cost of, good of goods of what ends up on the plate really isn't that different from anybody else. You know, we're buying vegetables from our local produce company. So that doesn't really change a whole lot. Because we try to make a lot of different, you know, great sauces for, and cashew tea, it's a lot more labor because you, you, you you're not going to just buy stuff. He has to make everything. Yeah, that's true. It is a lot more labor, right? You could buy uh, I don't know, a horse set, for example, but instead we make the cashew tea. Yeah. It takes a little bit but that's more. also what he likes to do. He loves making loves all that, these. Yeah. I mean, that's really Mike's sauces and cashew cheese. They're so delicious. You're not going to taste a better remoulade sauce or Russian dressing or 
a cashew cheese. I mean, they're so good, and that's one of the reasons people come back is because you get these fantastic homemade sauces. And, and yeah, that. people re have responded very well to them, including the cilantro sauce for the blended rice. Yeah, it's not easy. It, 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 it's a difficult business, you know. But I don't know what is easy, honestly. I'm not going to sit here and say it's that much harder than anything else because nothing's easy, really. It's a labor of love for sure. Without a doubt, we love. You know, the, yeah. so many of the customers are so great. Yeah. Uh, we see the same people. They post on our pages and they, you know, comment on our pictures and they're so supportive of us and so it really is. helps. So it makes all the work worth it. Luckily, I love what I do. You know, every once in a while you wake up, you feel like, oh man, I don't want to do You know, but once I get here, it, it's, it's not work if there's no place you'd rather be. Part of our mission as a mission driven base is not just to show individuals. Um, how they can eat differently and live their lives and be so happy um, and do better for the world, but to show other restaurants that you can serve vegan food, you can serve food made without, without animals, all plants, you can have packaging that's not plastic, you can do all these things and make the restaurant work, right? Sometimes people are, I think, afraid, so showing other restaurants that, as we were shown by restaurants before us, we were inspired by restaurants. Having a place where anybody can come here and yeah. feel loved and cared for with their food, to know that, you know, it doesn't Religion, matter. Beliefs, yeah, all that, we all love that. everybody and we want everyone to feel like there's a place here. We try to support a lot of local organizations. We yeah. want everybody to have a home here because um, we know that that's not true everywhere. We're always, I'm try, always trying to get better, you know, and just try to realize what's really important.